Hello everyone and welcome to The Final 30. I am your host, Zach Romero. Final 30 is a film experimentation series where I watch the last 30 minutes of a random B-movie and then decide if I'm going to start that movie over or if I'm going to have somebody come and just kick me right in the ding-ding. Today's episode will be looking at the final 1,832 seconds of 1985's Cave Girl. So this film starts with a dingus and an explorer's get up somehow going back in time and instead of, you know, immediately dying, he's farting around with this group of local theater actors dressed as Neanderthals. Our first joke consists of Preston Lacey here spraying shaving cream all over himself and the cave people for an uncomfortable amount of time. Like you see it happening, it's dumb, but whatever, but then it keeps going. And then there's unblinking, overreacting shots of everyone and it drags on and on. And there's no punchline. Spoiler alert, this kind of thing is gonna come up a lot in this pile of shit. But after that scene just ends, we join Flop Sweat the Explorer giving narration while three of the cavemen attempt to hunt. On this attempt, they had devised a much smaller spear. The logic, it would seem, was that with the aid of the smaller tool, the goal would become more readily attainable. <laughs> this scene is also painfully unfunny and has no punchline. And just to be clear, we are given no indication at this point how this jabroni actually traveled back in time. Why the cave people didn't immediately club his skull in, or how he's able to survive with a whole series of diseases and bacteria he's never come into contact with, constantly barraging him in this different era. If you're wondering how he eats and breathes, and other science facts, just repeat to yourself it's The shittiest writing. Now we get to what I guess is the driving force of the story, namely our hapless protagonist trying to have sex with the only blonde cave woman to the group. His terrible clammy grab assery is interrupted, however, when a very sedated for the safety of everyone on set bobcat stands over them and they hide in a small cave. Once there, they scare it off using the flash of a Polaroid camera. This scene is neither tense nor funny in any way. After this, we move into alone time between the blonde and Indiana ham sandwich over here. Now, if it seems like I'm just sort of jumping around or skipping things, I can assure you that's not the case. This film vehemently is against any sort of transition. There's a shitty setup, it becomes a black hole for comedy, and then a new setup begins. It's the most tenacious, shittiest vaudeville act that you've ever seen in your life. And then you see the cream everywhere. Well, what do you think, guys and dolls? Nothing? Not a peep? Well, what about three hunters that poop their pants trying to hunt a passive animal in the wild? Man? Nothing? The tribe's gonna die if they can't figure out some sort of food source. Eh? Eh? Anybody? You suck. Boo! Boy, it must be a ghost in here. So hey, let's watch a moment that was an attempted comedy back in 1985, which now reads as rapey as hell. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> um, sit back, sit back, <laughs> relax, relax, <laughs> smile, smile. I love it when you smile. You, you look so cute when you smile. You look so cute when you smile. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I been so thankful for terrible slapstick. For the sake of pacing in this video, I'm going to just list you off the next remaining butthole puckeringly unfunny moments leading up to the shitty, shitty finale of this thing. Multiple people attempt to fit under a single person poncho in the rain. The tribal leader cock blocks the future rapist by bouncing on a makeshift tent. A picnic scene happens complete with Howie Mandel prop comedy theft. The cave people find and destroy a flashlight. There's a six and a half minute scene, including a montage song of the two main characters wandering around looking for each other that does nothing but pad out the runtime. And by the way, no one's been kidnapped or fallen into a hole at this point. They've literally just lost track of each other. That's all. Then Wex, who I guess is this sloppy pile of fuck's name, runs into the cave girl again, and after handing her some weeds, suddenly they both decide they need to start making some love. Or, as this sloppy bitch calls it, Hi the weed! <laughs> Gross. Meanwhile, a much more interesting tribe of cannibal cave people kidnap the dumb shit tribe and hold them hostage. Wex and cave girl Eva run into the vagina face 
cannibals. Two, and because the script said so, they only take the blonde and leave our main character completely alone like no tribe of warriors would ever do. So Stack of Pancakes here decides to pull the old Dread Pirate Roberts gimmick and scared the cannibals off using a bunch of fireworks and crap he magically had back with him when he traveled back in time. So the day is apparently saved when suddenly Wex discovers his glasses in a riverbed, which for some reason leads him to the time portal. He walks off screen and is suddenly back in 1985 because that's how time travel works in this movie. DeLorean, get that shit out of here. Phone booth, Doctor Who can blow both Bill and Ted. We don't need any of that shit. Just a frumpy John Hammond walking 10 feet and we'll just call him from there. I don't care. So he comes back to the present, tells all his friends what happened, none of them believe him, and basically just call him an asshole, aka the best part of the movie. He finally says to hell with everything and runs back in and the portal still works, I guess? In my own little slice of fan fiction for this, uh, I like to imagine that there is no actual time portal, that when Wex just runs into this cave, he's just breathing in a lot of natural gas that's accumulated from inside and just kind of hallucinates the whole story. So that at the end here, when he runs back in, he breathes in so much natural gas that he fucking dies. Womp womp. Absolutely not. And in case you haven't picked up on what's going on here, it's not just that the film is unfunny. The film is painfully unfunny. It's that it's unfunny and long. Every scene in this chunk of 30 minutes could be cut in half, and it wouldn't make them any funnier, but it would certainly make them a lot less painful. And you know what I'm realizing? Between this almost Hollywood beach girls, the worst part of this film set are the terrible comedies. It's not the bad special effects or the questionable racist ideas in 70s films. Bad acting or boring writing can just become white noise, but waka waka waka, waka waka waka, waka waka waka, in your face for 30 minutes, that's the endurance trial. Long story short, I'm on to your game, kid girl. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Thank you for watching the final 30. I'm Zach Romero. Until next time. Are you on the pill? Huh? Uh, no, why would you be on the pill? You're a pretty little cave girl. Why would you? Excuse me. Hide the weenie. Fuck you.